What's going down, guys? This is your boy DJ Just J with Just Dimes ENT, and I am your humble host of The Soto You Dig. We'd like to welcome you guys here to the show. We'd like to thank you guys for being here. It is a great honor and a great pleasure to be able to bring you guys this show. TRU, y'all make sure to hit them TRUs in the chat, man. Love you guys so much. I am super, super excited. I don't think I've ever been this excited for a show besides this one. Because like I say, I like to think of myself as a huge, huge No Limit fan. So I'm hoping that you guys, you know, like a little bit of their music. <coughs> Whatever your favorite artist was. I know I definitely was a big, big fan and still am a big fan of Steve Murder. And I know that he was in a situation that... You know, uh, being in the wrong place at the wrong time has caught him up in this situation, and he's been in jail for a very, very long time, man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preface this by reading you guys a little bit of his story, okay? Now, C. Murder, whose otherwise government name is Corey Miller, has been sitting in the infamous Louisiana State Penitentiary in Angola since 2009, convicted of a second-degree murder charge. The former No Limit rapper and brother of Percy Master P. Miller was accused of killing 16-year-old Steve Thomas at the Platinum Club in New Orleans in 2002 and was locked away after two trials. Though it seems like C. Murder will never see the light, again, uh, the light of day again and every album he releases will have to be from behind bars, the rapper may have... A, 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 uh, a new life as two new eyewitnesses have come forward proclaiming his innocence and also one of the original witnesses that gave a eyewitness testimony against him is now recanting his story and that is very very recent so you guys stay tuned I've got some awesome videos coming up for you guys okay so Rachel Connor the defense lawyer representing C murder filed papers with the 24th district court calling for his sentence to be overturned on Monday, arguing that he did not receive a fair trial, according to NOLA.com. She argued that authorities could link Miller to Thomas's killing with only two eyewitnesses. Uh, she argued that that uh, authorities could link Miller to Thomas's killing with only two eyewitnesses who had been threatened by law enforcement, had serious potential uh, criminal charges resolved, and had to be arrested under material witness warrants in order to ensure their appearance. Yet, they had been contacted. Several credible witnesses could have testified that Miller was pushed away from, uh, from the fray and left the club, Connor said. Among these two eyewitnesses is former San Antonio Spurs player Tim Bush. He was uh, just a high school student at the time and claims to have seen another man, not see murder, in a hat coming to the club and fire at Thomas. He did not come forward because he did not want to jeopardize his basketball career. So some of the issues Connor raises are as follows. Number one, juror misconduct during deliberations. Number two, questions about the competence, the competency of one juror. Number three, abuse of discretion by the trial judge, hands, let me see. Liljeburg, Hans Liljeburg, which is L-I-L-J-E-B-E-R-G, who now sits on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal. Connor argues that the 10 to 12 verdict used to convict C. Murder was unconstitutional. She claims that jurors voted in favor of conviction under duress. So if you guys are familiar with under duress, meaning that they cannot be pressured into making a decision on somebody's life and that, that uh, verdict would have to be overturned, okay? Attorney dist uh, a dis Assistant District Attorney Terry Boudreaux has countered Connor, arguing that a number of issues C-Murder is, is using now have been addressed in previous appeals and cannot be used again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move into the video portion of this thing and before I show you guys that number one with the music that we're gonna play I'm gonna let you know that we're gonna show that under fair usage and before we show these videos we're gonna also use that under fair usage okay so here we go and I'm going to do my legal due diligence and read you guys my statement 
Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Two key witnesses that identified New Orleans rapper Corey C. Murder Miller as the shooter in a 2002 nightclub killing in Harvey is now recanting his testimony. Now the witness now claims he was pressured by detectives to ID Miller and that investigators told him what to say. Paul Murphy joins us from the Jefferson Parish Courthouse with the story. Paul? Karen Tan, rapper C. Murder is now serving a life sentence for murdering a teenage fan at a now closed Harvey nightclub. Corey Miller, which is his real name, is now asking judges here at the JP Courthouse to throw out the conviction based on the fact that a key prosecution witness now swears that he lied on the stand. Kenneth Jordan is one of two witnesses who testified that Corey C. Murder Miller shot and killed a teenager during a nightclub brawl at the Platinum Club in Harvey 16 years ago. A Jefferson Parish jury found Miller guilty of killing 16-year-old Steve Thomas in 2009. A judge sentenced him to life in prison. This week, Miller's attorney, Paul Barker, filed a memorandum in Jefferson Parish District Court claiming Jordan is now recanting his testimony. He felt threatened and pressured to give testimony that was being fed to him. According to an affidavit, Jordan now claims that the person he saw commit the shooting was not Corey Miller. He also claims JPSO officers threatened to prosecute him for felony carnal knowledge of a juvenile and threatened him with at least 10 years in prison if he failed to testify against Miller. He says in his affidavit that he informed the state prior to the 2009 trial that his 2003 statement was not true. That's a recanting of the testimony, and that's information that should have been disclosed to the defense. Trey Mustian, an attorney representing the victim's family, says Steve Thomas's parents find the revelations in the case very disturbing. He would have been uh, 33 years old on June 10th. And that's something that they're, they're focused on, and it's unfortunate the timing of all this coming around his birthday. That makes it especially difficult for him. Mustian expects Miller's conviction to stand. All that stuff was brought out on cross-examination during the trial. Corey Miller continues to maintain his innocence. Barker is now seeking his release from prison. Instead of ordering a new trial, they should dismiss the charges against him. The JPSO and the Jefferson Parish District Attorney's Office both declined comment for this story. It is unclear when the court will rule on Corey Miller's request. We're live at the Jefferson Parish Courthouse in Gretna. Paul Murphy, Eyewitness News. Paul, thank you. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you guys a video that's going to be airing tonight. And I want to make sure that you guys tune in to that show. And that show is, let me, let me get this up on the screen real quick for you guys. It's called Reasonable Doubt. Okay? So, I want to, want, I want to make sure that you guys get a chance to tune into that. Because the original uh, picture that was posted online was actually inaccurate. But it is Wednesday, June 27th, which is today. And this is the, uh, the Investigation Discovery uh, 10, p 10 p.m. 9 p.m. Central Time. The code rapper, uh, rap, rap star Corey C. Murder Miller was convicted of killing one of his fans after after a fight broke out at a at a crowded nightclub, which is the Platinum Club. Chris Anderson and Fatima Silva have been called by C. Murder's family to uncover the truth, which is reasonable doubt, which will be airing tonight. And I want to make sure that you guys tune into that, which is right here, okay? So I'm going to show that on the screen here just for a second, and then we're going to go ahead and switch over to the next video. So again, I tried to send this out to as many people as I possibly could to make sure that they got a chance to repost it, but there it is. Reasonable Doubt will be airing tonight, so y'all make sure and tune in to that, okay? So here's the next video. Let's keep going. That doesn't resonate very well with me, Corey. I mean, I got to be honest okay, with you. I know that don't have to resonate. You're not going to believe my story, but my story is my story. Right. Now, let me ask you this. There were a couple of witnesses who identified you as the shooter. So what about those witnesses? They were just making stuff up. You know, 15 minutes of fame. 
that night of the shoot, nobody mentioned my name at all. Right. Only people know me, they know my face. Right. They know who I am. If that would have been me, I shot this dude. They would have told them people so they walk in the door that I did. Do you know who shot the guy? No, we don't know who shot the guy. Okay. So what about this, the, the Juan Flowers? Let me tell you something about me. You ain't gonna never hear nothing come out my mouth turning the thing at nobody else. Not even to save my own soul. That just ain't gonna happen. That's just the way I live. That's the way I, I come up. Wow. But you gotta understand this, Corey. Every day that you sit in prison and you're there innocently, and your daughters think you're there innocently, they are serving time with you every single day. They are right alongside of you. You understand that? I can't tell you how many times your daughter smiled every time we mentioned your name. She loves you beyond measure. If you had any part to do with this, you don't have to tell me, honestly, you don't. But tell your daughters, they are still gonna love you no matter what. As a reminder, guys, that's Man, gonna be I mean, airing tonight. You pull a big fish, you bring on a child, you're gonna make the news, you can upgrade your career. And again, guys, Reasonable Doubt is going to be airing tonight, so y'all please make sure and look that up. I got a few more videos to show you guys, so we're gonna keep this thing going. If y'all would, do me a favor. I don't have to pause the video at all. If y'all would do me a single favor and hit the thumbs up. So what they're looking at is they're saying, hey, can you tell me information about this poor person? And what C-Murder is saying is that he's saying, hey, I'm not going to point the finger at nobody. But what I'm saying is I didn't do it. And so if that witness recants his statement like he has, then his conviction should be overturned. And then he doesn't have to actually tell on anybody. It's not his job to tell on anybody. Okay. But it is his job to prove his innocence. Can we agree to that? Let's keep going. It's coming from the project. The police going to profile you as a criminal, as a crook, as somebody. Has no physical now, what I want to do is I wanted to play one of his tracks here real quick. I wanted y'all to hear this. And this is actually from uh, one of his albums that came out. So let me uh, play this for you real quick. This is an intro from one of his albums. Coming from the project, the police gonna profile you as a criminal, as a crook, as somebody. Police has no physical him. evidence connecting him to the crime. The evidence that they had to uh, lock me up was nothing. There's no evidence, no forensics, no ballistics, no gun, no nothing. Corey waits on his next day in court, but he wonders if it will be his turn in court or if once again it will be seen murder and all of hip hop on trial. They're trying to stop us all together. I mean, is it a bigger picture? Is it some? This is the first step to something you're trying to do to us in the future? Maybe end it? You know, you gotta start thinking like that because it's, like, it's real out here. You know, it's real. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause that so you guys can read that and see what it said. And it says, Louisiana, Texas, New York, and, uh, and the U.S., if you're going to, uh, to, to lock up hip-hop on their lyrical content, then you must lock up country music, metal music, blues music, gangster movies, and American Sniper. Why, why just hip-hop? Why? One one false move is I think is the name of that uh, that instrumental, so you can look that up on your own. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and hit our next video. Let's keep it going. I even though he told them repeatedly, Corey didn't do it. I saw who did it. It was a man, a hooded man. It was not Corey. This signed affidavit from the witness, Kenneth Jordan, breaks it all down. So it states he was at the club when the shooting happened, but says, quote, I know that the individual who I saw shoot the gun was not Corey Miller. So... How is all of this connected? Well, according to the affidavit in 2003, Jordan was arrested after his newborn baby was found dead. Jordan said JPSO officers told him the only way he would get justice for his baby is if he, quote, agreed to cooperate and give them a statement implicating Corey. So he did. The system used him because these cops 
were insistent that Corey had to do it. And now, years later, the affidavit says Jordan wants to right the wrong he made. We're just very thankful that even though it's a little late, it did eventually come to the surface and we're able to put it before the court. And I talked to the Jefferson Parish DA's office and they said they cannot comment on this case. Even though he told them repeatedly, Corey didn't do it. All right, let's go ahead and get the uh, next video up here. Here we go. Go keep going. We want justice for Corey. That justice may be closer than they think. On Tuesday, the attorney for rapper Corey Miller, better known as C Murder, filed a memorandum asking for the conviction to be reversed. That's what should have happened from the beginning. He should have never been charged, prosecuted, or convicted. Just days ago, a key witness in the trial came forward saying his testimony was fabricated. He alleged Jefferson Parish officers forced him to say Miller shot and killed Steve Thomas at a nightclub in 2002 and then forced him to testify. Even though he told them repeatedly, Corey didn't do it. Now, don't y'all find that kind of crazy? It sounds like it has a ring of a, a large ring of truth to it. The fact that they wanted a conviction because they're not used to being able to get convictions. And they have a lot of pressure in those counties and those cities, which is why I said that you guys need to vote. And what's up, Megan Cannon? You guys need to vote in your local elections because of the fact that these people are literally locking people up behind them getting votes. Y'all understand that? In order to can get convictions, they're saying all these murders are going unsolved. So what are you going to do? Okay, so we're going to lock up one of the biggest rappers that you guys know. And we're going to pin this murder on him. And we're going to get a conviction based on us forcing somebody to say that he did something and saw that he did something that he actually did not do. That happens all the time. This is why you guys got to vote the right people in, in your, law, in your law systems. This is why voting is very important. Same exact thing happened to Mac. And I think the same exact thing that they're trying to push on Mystical and, and, a, and a lot of these other rappers, okay? So shout out to uh, to McKinley Phipps, a.k.a. Uh, uh, Mac, another rapper that's been locked up. He's locked up right along with C-Murder. So we're going to continue to push for their justice, okay? So if y'all would, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. We got about 305 people watching. If y'all would, please hit the thumbs up so other people can know that we're live. Shout out to Master P. Shout out to... You know, Romeo, like I said, I told you guys before that he actually showed me some love on my Instagram. So shout out to Romeo. Shout out to Mia X, who hit me up on Twitter, which was pretty dope. You know, shout out to uh, Mercedes, who I talk to on Instagram from time to time. You know, shout out to, um, you know, to Reggie Nelly. I don't know if he's watching right now, but I hit him up. So shout out to him. You know, shout out to my guy, Mr. Servon. I talked to him from time to time. So shout out to him. Man, and everybody No Limit related, those are, you know, that's that's something that's close to my heart because I grew up on No Limit Rap. I used to take every bit of, little bit of extra money that I had to go buy No Limit albums. So shout out to those guys. Shout out to the family. Shout out to Silk the Shaka. Shout out to all of them. Here's the next video. Hip hop is about poverty. It's about people's perception of their poverty and their struggle to get out of that poverty. On it's a trophy. I mean, they want to send a message out to everybody. Look, we got C murder. We can get any black man that we want. Like that my whole life. I mean, ever since I've been in high school, the cops have been following me. They're probably taping this conversation right now. Are rappers a menace to society, profiting from crimes chronicled in their lyrics? Or are these artists being persecuted by law enforcement for tapping the rage of America's underclass? Meanwhile, in Louisiana, just 200 yards from the Mississippi River, in the jail cell that has been his home for nearly three years, Corey Miller sits waiting on a retrial for the murder of a 16-year-old boy in a nightclub shooting. This is Jefferson Parish Correctional Center. You know, they got me for a second-degree murder, something I didn't do. To many, Corey is not behind bars because he's a killer because he is the well-known rapper C. Murder, infamous for his stark rhymes of violence and killing. This man was demonized from literally the day he was arrested. The chief law enforcement officer of Jefferson Parish makes a statement to the police that this is a man who's living his name, see murder. He's living his lyrics. 
But prosecutors say the stage name fits like a bloody glove. He's a killer. The verdict in the new trial will hinge on the jury's perception of who sits before them. Corey Miller, artist, or C. Murder, homicidal thug. To have my name used against me since I've been arrested, you know, it hurt, you hurt me because it's like, I'm guilty for I'm innocent. New Orleans and Miami are just two battlegrounds in what has become a war of values. Race does play a factor in a lot of these cases. You, you have prejudice in every department because people see these guys making a lot of money, driving a Mercedes Benz that they could work 20 years and never get. To some, the conflict is as much a class struggle as a racial one. Hip hop spits truth to power. And very often those in law enforcement represent uh, a protective force for those who are in power. Police would be focusing on hip hop like never before. One of the first to react. In 2001, seven years after Tupac Shakur's conviction on sexual assault charges, another thug rapper found himself in trouble with the law. After nearly three years in Jefferson Parish Correctional Center, Corey Miller remains behind bars on charges of second degree murder and the killing of a 16 year old boy. This is happening to me because I'm first of all, I'm seeing murder. And in New Orleans, that means many things to different people. The brother of rap superstar and mogul Master P, Miller carved his own niche in hip hop. Corey Miller forged his gangster image in the grim Calliope housing projects in Central City, New Orleans. Basically, just coming from the project, the police gonna profile you as a criminal, as a crook, as somebody that's about to do wrong. On the night of January 12, 2002, Miller went to a rap contest at the Platinum Club in this empty bowling alley across the river from New Orleans. The night of this incident at the Platinum Club, I went to have some fun. I went to the club. There was an incident. There was a shooting. Steve Thomas, a 16-year-old who had sneaked into the club, was struck and killed. I had no part of it. Once the shooting happened, I left along with other hundred of other people, you know, and, uh, and left, went about my business. Six days later, Miller was arrested for the murder, although police possessed no physical evidence connecting him to the crime. The evidence that they had to uh, lock me up was none. There's no evidence, no forensics, no ballistics, no gun, no nothing. No calls to the police reporting the murder were made at the time and different witnesses recall vastly different characteristics when describing the shooter. No other suspects were pursued by police. Jefferson Parish police refused comment on the case. A name was given to the police as the person who had committed this murder. And I can tell you that from my review of what was purported to be the entire police files, there's not any indication that any steps whatsoever were taken to follow that lead as to the identity, uh, as to the, whether or not this person was the real perpetrator. On the indictment, Miller was also charged by his stage name, C. Murder. By the time I went to trial, they, they uh, came up with three witnesses. There was not a single witness who came to this trial and testified before this jury that said they ever even saw a gun in his hand. To Miller and his attorney, what the state had really put on trial was the stage image of C. Murder. For me to be in a situation because my name is C. Murder and I'm on a murder charge, you, you can't put both of them together and just off top assume that I'm guilty. The prosecutor pointed to C. Murder and said, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is his name, C. Murder. Now, if a person got a name C. Murder, you know that they must be guilty of murder. That's wrong. At one point during a bond hearing, C. Murder's blunt lyrics were read in the courtroom. What does his lyrics have to do with whether or not he should be given bond? So does his profession, does his line of work, does hip hop play some role in these things? Apparently it did to these folks. It 
It was not the first time that a rapper's lyrics were used as evidence against him. Not only is it outrageous and prejudicial to have somebody in a trial to have lyrics read from a song and use that in some ways as evidence of your guilt, but it also turns on its head the whole idea of the presumption of innocence in our criminal system. I think that's ridiculous. I think that's that's like me, um, you know, that's like Robert De Niro getting a ticket and me, uh, you know, reading a line from Goodfellas. It makes no sense. But well, people, are, you know, they ask questions like, well, you, well, do you feel like rappers have a responsibility, you know, with their lyrics? No. The only responsibility is to make it as hot as you think it could be. But to police, the literal nature of rap tracks makes them potential evidence of a criminal state of mind. If you are saying in your rap lyric that you are going to kill or are responsible for some form of violence that took place and, and that violence did in fact unfold in the manner in which you're talking about, then I think the police have the very right to use those lyrics. The combined effect of the sea murder image and the testimony of the three witnesses against him was enough to sway the jury. Miller was convicted of second degree murder. In C. Murder's case, you see an example uh, of grossly uh, unfair use of uh, the First Amendment uh, as evidence to convict someone. My conviction was really, you know, they, they took my soul, they took my life to put the community at ease. The mandatory sentence for the conviction was life in prison. While the verdict was the subject of angry debate in New Orleans, Throughout hip-hop, a larger question was being asked. Was rap itself being targeted for a takedown? A smoking gun would soon appear. Then, troubling discoveries about the handling of the C murder trial added credence to the idea that rappers were being targeted for prosecution. Hidden from the defense team was the fact that each of the three key witnesses against Miller had themselves been facing charges. Offers had been made reducing or dismissing their charges in return for their testimony. Miller's defense team immediately appealed for the verdict to be set aside. Equally disturbing, a major piece of conflicting testimony had been reported to prosecutors, but never made it to trial. And one of the witnesses came forward and said, well, it wasn't him, I saw the guy who it was. It wasn't Corey Miller. When she was questioned by the police, she told them that although she had never seen Corey Miller with a gun, she had seen someone else. And in fact, she said that she was shown photographs by the police and that she identified a person in those photographs as the person she had seen with a gun. She said the police were told her they weren't interested in that person. They were only interested in Corey Miller. Based on the new information, the trial judge overturned the verdict and granted a new trial. Ultimately, the uh, jury's verdict was set aside by the court because the court found that the police and the prosecutors had massively violated Corey Miller's right to a fair trial. Corey waits on his next day in court. Prosecutors say the outcome will remain the same. If you guys would, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. That'll let other people know that we're live. We got about almost 500 people watching. This is a basically just the story of what happened. And, I, and yes, he will be getting out because the witness that convicted him and got him convicted for life is actually already recanted his story. So now they're going to work with that and they're going to get him out. So, yes. But he wonders if it will be his turn in court or if once again it will be C murder and all of hip hop on trial. They're trying to stop us all together. I mean, is it a bigger picture? Is it some, this is the first step to something you're trying to do to us in the future? Maybe end it? You know, you got to start thinking like that because, look, it's real out here. You know, it's real. I just want to thank all the fans for their prayers. And matter of fact, guys, this is actually a message from Master P, and I wanted to be able to share this with you guys. So shout out to all the No Limit fans out there. I want you to guys to hear this from Master P, and then I also have a video from Romeo, too. So here we go. I just want to thank all the fans for their prayers and their support for my brother, Corey Miller. He's in Angola. And I know people say, you know, you know, why should he have rights and justice? I mean... He's not a model citizen. <laughs> he named himself some crazy stuff. We all do. We all have relatives. I know me and him bump heads all the time. We haven't seen eye to eye in a while. 
but I'm not going to let my brother rot in a cell and be treated with injustice, knowing that he's an innocent man. I mean, they have facts. The club have a camera, shows who's the shooter. Uh, also, somebody confessed to the crime. And uh, I feel like if somebody confessed, they should let this man go. That's why I say free quarter of Miller. Um, I will go there and go sit down with the warden. And I tell you one thing that you can learn from this case. You can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. You choose the wrong friends, you might end up dead in the pen. All right, so shout out to Master P for that video. This is one from uh, Romeo, and we're almost wrapped up here, guys. Let's keep watching. 510 people watching, hit the thumbs up, please. This is from my guy, Romeo. Shout out to Romeo, who actually hit me up on uh, on one of my uh, Instagram posts, which is pretty cool, man. So shout out to Romeo. Shout out to Rap Snacks also. Y'all make sure and get y'all some of those. Shout out to Rap Snacks. So here we go. Here's the video. Hardly slept last night. I felt like I had to just throw this message out there. The world is a crazy place, but it's been a crazy place. I saw death at an early age, so I was always numb to it. You know, R.P. Lance Connor and R.P. Fred Connor. My cousin Fred basically got jumped by. I couldn't sleep. Like I saw all this stuff on the internet with the kid Junior stabbed to death. Then X music kept popping up. It's like our youth is dying from senseless crimes. I feel X was somebody who was misunderstood, but he had a, a purpose, right? And now that he's passed away, people are seeing that purpose. That light is shining on it. Just imagine what our youth could do if they're here alive, though. I just want to tell y'all, stay prayed up. Make sure you're living your best life. You just never know. And praying for all of those who lost somebody. Once again, man, shout out to my guy Romeo. Um, I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all this real quick, and let me read this to you guys here just for a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not that one. Let's show you. Uh, let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is it at? Also, uh, C Murder and his team wanted to let you guys know to make sure that you tune in tonight, which is six twenty-seven eighteen, which is today. Be sure to turn in to Investigation Discovery at 10 p.m., 9 p.m. Central Time and watch Reasonable Doubt. The code, you will soon realize why we have been saying C is innocent throughout all these years. It's time to send C back home to his family. Not guilty. Hashtag share, hashtag repost, hashtag tell a friend, hashtag watch uh, Investigation Discovery. Hashtag the code tonight. Hashtag free Corey Miller. Okay. Hashtag Balsalini. Hashtag free C murder. Hashtag C murder. Hashtag entertainer. Hashtag injustice, man. So shout out to him again. Again, the witness is retracting his statement. It's already been done. So now all we have to do is wait for his lawyers to continue to work in his favor and do their thing. And we should be able to get uh, C murder home here pretty soon. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys this last little bit of footage in this video, and then we're gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Baby, This is Chanel, my youngest. Come here, Coco. You love daddy? Say hey, B.E.T. Chelsea! 